Welcome back to the Junk Man's Adventures. I'm the Junk Man, and today we're going to do another toy restoration. It's been a while. Today's toy is a Tonka forklift from the early to mid 70s. This came in a set with a flatbed truck that had some little plastic uh, crates that it could lift up and down with its forks and lo load them onto the flatbed truck. Most of these that you'll find out in the wild, of course, are missing the truck, and they're usually in pretty rough shape. And most of them out in the wild, if they're broken, they're broken like mine that is missing the screw part that actually makes the mast go up and down. But not only that, we're going to build some little pallets here and such for added play value and even a little wooden crate, something to put uh, little toys in. And we might even make some stuff to put on these pallets for a little added play value. Well, anyway, let's get started. Okay, as with always, we start by taking it apart. We need to get these little hat nuts off. And sometimes these can be rusted on. So just get them off any way that you can. In this case, I'm going to have to cut them off. I tried with my vice grips and had to break it all up. But you'll see here, I got a little cutoff wheel on my rotary tool here. Cut it off. And then using a screwdriver, I can kind of pop it off. And then we can take the two sections apart. We need to do this on the wheels, same deal, cut them off if you have to. We're going to replace them. And here I'm grinding the rivets. There's two rivets that hold this front part on that uh, holds the carriage to the mast and just pop them out with a center punch. And you just pull out the front. This front piece is plastic, so be careful. And then we need to take the uh, forks off. And now you can see this plastic piece is quite faded and it's kind of brittle. We're going to have to take, kind of take care of that uh, later. But that's the front carriage part and we'll clean that up later. Here this is just an E-clip that holds this part on. We're going to save this for later because I have a fix for this because there's supposed to be a screw part that raises up and down. The seat comes out just by pulling it out and bending some tabs. And then we'll just pull the pin out to separate the two halves. And just bend the tabs up here to take this part off. And then there's some tabs underneath we'll have to get at. Just be very careful doing this. It's real easy to stab your hand. I know from experience. Take some pliers and bend them up and just bend them straight. You don't want to bend them too much because bending them too much they can eventually fatigue and break off. And there we go. Now we have access to the two tabs that hold this engine compartment on. And these proved to be a little tough but I just kept working on them with a screwdriver and got them bent up. Now here's all the parts that we needed to take apart. We're going to need to clean some parts up, strip some paint, and get ready for refinishing and then vinyl assembly. It's as simple as that. Here I am using some paint stripper. I uh, use safety equipment while you're doing this, a respirator and eye protection. Just spray it down and you'll start to see the paint just lift off right before your eyes. Usually it takes about 15-20 minutes of sitting on there. Sometimes it takes two applications for very stubborn parts, but just coat the parts evenly and let them sit. Now we washed all that off and now it's time to take care of some of this rust and scale from where the paint was missing. And I'm just using a 3M clean and strip disc, a clean and strip XT disc on my uh, right angle tool here. You can do this a couple different ways but this is the quickest way. We're just prepping it up so we can put some primer on it later. And I like these clean and strip XT discs because they clean off rust paint and other debris without 
gouging or harming the underlying metal or surface. And that shines it up real nice. It'll make a real good base for our self-etching primer. You could also do this by hand or use a drill and a wire brush, but be careful with wire brushes because those little wires can fly out, so you're going to want to wear some safety equipment. I'm wearing safety glasses running the, even this tool, even though it's a lot safer than a wire brush, but the debris can fly up and hit you in the face, so you're going to want to use some safety equipment when doing these operations. Just going over the entire part because I want to get it nice and clean, the better the prep now, the better the finish will be. Now we got all our parts cleaned up. I even used a little bit of a bristle disc on it to get into some tighter spots. And it looks pretty good. Here we are. I hung them up and am shooting them just with some self-etching primer because they were all down to bare metal. I like using the Rust-Oleum brand. I've used it a lot and I've had good results with it. Just getting even coverage and of course wear proper safety equipment. Now let's take care of this broken part. I found this at the hardware store. It's a lag bolt for like a gate and we're going to cut that end off and it's oversized and it's darn near the exact same size as the original plastic screw and we're going to use my little small cutoff tool here or chop saw to cut the head off here and then we're just going to discard that and you'll see it will fit down inside once we drill a little hole so I center punched and got it chucked up in here into my drill press and we're going to drill this out. We're going to do it in two steps. We're going to use one small size and then open it up to the exact dimension so that plastic end can fit down in there. And you'll see that next. All right. It's got a nice tight fit there. And I could epoxy it in right now, but what I'm going to do is drill a very small hole so I can put a cotter pin or later maybe a roll pin in. So first I'm going to drill a pilot clear through without the other part in there so I can stick my cotter pin through. And I didn't focus my camera just right, but I'm drilling through now both pieces so I get through the plastic so my holes will line up. We're just going to check the fit now. Just got a cotter pin here of the size I'm going to use. Put it through there. And then all we'll need to do is uh, bend the little tang when we're ready to do final assembly. Just like that. Now it's time to put the color coat on. And I'm just using uh, some implement paint that roughly approximates the Tonka yellow. I've used this color before. I really like it. And I've used this paint before. It's turned out to be very durable in another project that I've done. So I'm going to use it on this. And we're just going to do light coats. We don't want to get any runs, but we want to get full and even coverage. This is going to take you a while. So take your time, do it in a well-ventilated area. I have a vent fan going as well as my respirator. So while that's drying, let's build our little pallets to go along with this. I wanted to build some little pallets to add to some of the play value just so it has something to lift up. It came with those original plastic crates which obviously get lost, broken, and damaged. Uh, so I had some spare and leftover scrap wood from some other projects and some of these were the exact size I needed so I didn't even have to cut some of these down. 
but we're just going to put them together. We're going to simulate maybe somewhat of a heavy duty pallet here because I envision this as an outdoor type forklift uh, that goes over rough ground. So you'd be using heavy duty pallets with very heavy parts that you're trying to lift and ship around the country. And because my drill wouldn't go that small, I put my teeny tiny drill bit in my pin vise so I could slowly drill pre-drill holes so I can glue and nail these. And I sped it up. You can see how I did it. We're just using super glue here. Nothing fancy here. This will be plenty fine. Use the nails and the glue and they're as strong as can be and they should last a long time. All right, we got our pallets built. Now I found this little crate at a hobby store, or craft store, and I decided I'd put some runners on this and make it so it could lift this little crate. That crate will be perfect to put, I don't know, marbles or blocks or even matchbox cars or something in there so it can haul them around. All right, now that our color coat has had ample time to dry, it's time to put the clear coat on. And I'm using a catalyzed clear coat here. It's actually a urethane coat with an app activator. And I'm spraying it with my touch-up gun. And I'm wearing gloves because this stuff is pretty toxic. And uh, this is something you don't want to be fooling around with. I have my exhaust fan going. And I'm wearing a respirator. And we're just making sure we get good coverage. And I've sped this up here but I'm doing some light tack coats and then I finish up with a heavy gloss coat and when the activator kicks over, this will be a very hard, durable, yet flexible coating so it should last for years to come and offer very good UV resistance. All right, here's the wheels. They were pretty chewed up, pretty rotten and chalky. I scraped away as much of the old chalky plastic as possible. This is the best I could do. So they're just gonna have to be that, that way. This is now putting in the new rivets in the front of the mast. And I don't have the right tool for this, but a center punch does just fine in this instance. And you can see, just bent those over and it pinched those two together and holds the two parts together, just like new. Now we're going to put the two halves together, put the pin in. You're going to notice that little zip tie there. That's holding the two parts of the mask. They were kind of splayed apart, and it actually rides up and down a lot better with them pinched together. I'll probably make something a little more, more nicer later. I just didn't think about it until it was after I had it painted. We're going to put these hat nuts on, or push nuts. And I put a socket in there that fits right over there and then pound them down in there. And the seat just snaps back in. And we're going to put the forks on and they just slide back in. Everything reassembles basically the reverse of how you took it apart. So I'm kind of speeding through this. Again, using a socket of appropriate size to use as a driver to drive these little hat nuts on. Now you don't have to whack these on there. Just some light taps is all it takes to get them started. Once you do, you can just give it some other light taps here and put them on. And now they won't be coming off. It's time to do the same thing with the wheels. Put the axle through, put the other wheel on, and then use a socket. Same deal, to drive your push nuts home.
All right, now it's time to put the screw assembly down through to make the mast go up and down. And as you can see, it kind of just slips through that hole and then have to press it in there. I had a little bit of trouble getting it in there. And there we go, got it screwed into the mast part there and turning it and looks like it's going up. Now it's time to replace that little E-clip. That'll keep that part from falling out. And now it's time to put our little cotter pin in. Just push it through the hole. And we're going to bend over one of the tangs. And then we're going to snip off that other end with some side cutters. Alright, now it's time to install the little reproduction light that I got online on eBay. And I just installed my reproduction decals and let's test her out. I think it looks pretty good. It works really good. And I forgot to tell you, you notice that the screw part is black. Well, that's not paint. That is a dry graphite coating called slip plate uh, that I use on a lot of different things and I installed it here or sprayed it here rather to make it uh, have a little bit of dry lubrication so it goes up and down real easy and as you can see it goes up and down and we're lifting our crates and our pallets and it works and it's now ready for play I thank you for watching please subscribe Please check out my website, check out my sponsors, leave a like, share this video around. Hopefully it inspires you to restore maybe some of your old toys or find some old neglected toys that somebody's forgotten and restore them yourself. But anyway, I appreciate it and thanks for watching.